caution. The following introduction features the worst impression of Arnold I have ever heard. At one point, I thought the host was doing a South African accent. He should be ashamed and you have been warned. Yeah, why are you still playing with dots for a little curly man? You should go up and play with real people like me. I play with my maid all the time. She loves it and I'm all like, who is your daddy and what does he do? And she gives me babies and more. Anyway, here is the guy twins 112 scale T800 figure. I played the twin ones. My brother was Danny and everyone said I was a funny man for a while. It was good times. Now I just do shitty Terminator sequels and occasionally show up in public unannounced. I should probably retire. Cue the intro. Okay, Arnold, thanks a lot, mate, thanks. Yep, yep, thank you, bye-bye, bye. See you later. Oh, he's a nice guy, isn't he? Always turns up unannounced, though, very weird. Okay, guys, here we go. Here is the 12th scale Supreme T800 from Terminator 2 Judgment Day by Great Twins. This is a 112 scale figure in the style of sort of Mezco. So I was really curious about this one to see if Great Twins could actually step up to the plate and uh, put a bit of competition Mezco's way. This is the box, as you can see, very, very nice box design. Very simple, very understated. I quite like that. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the whole big, noisy, messy box style you know I'm not going to display these boxes so it doesn't really matter to me but I actually like this nice simplistic text spot UV shiny T800 Terminator 2 just some wording about what the T800 is studio canal logo great twins on the side again for some simple writing and then we've got T800 on the back there there's a top, there's a bottom, and it has a plastic insert inside. Okay guys, and here he is, just straight out of the box. I've got him with his grenades around his uh, chest area there. I've put the bag on. He's got the grenade launcher in his hand and I've put the sunglasses on. He's in a semi-cool off to the side pose. Straight out of the box, I was really impressed with everything you got with this guy. I was not expecting the quality that I got and there's some fantastic paint applications on the head and neck. There's some great tailoring in the clothing. There's some nice little details in there that you wouldn't normally expect. Is it perfect? No, there are a few niggles here and there, but um, overall, yeah, I think this is a really nice figure. Let's go in and have a look. Okay. Okay, so here's the head sculpt just taking it off the uh, neck there you can see it's got a magnet on the inside which is really nice because it helps for articulation and posing and it sits on top of the neck quite nicely and those sunglasses are great they're really diddy and really tiny very much like the uh, Mezco blade sunglasses but they fit on that head pretty well they sit down on the nose pretty nicely and there is some fantastic paint application in this head sculpt taking the sunglasses off you can see that they've put some five o'clock shadow in there but not too much They've also done some paint flecking in there to give the skin tone some texture. The eyes are nice and straight and quite shiny. The eyebrows are very cleanly painted. Come around, there's some great detail in those ears. The hair sculpt is very nice. Not a lot of bleed off. And there's some great detailing in that hair. Throw out the top. And overall, it's a very nicely painted head sculpt. Slight flaw in the sort of, I don't know, I think it's the prominent cheekbones and the sunken in cheeks. Very strong, a bit too much. It almost looks like a really good caricature of Arnold rather than a bang on representation of him. But it still looks great. Details in the forehead, see some wrinkling just there between the eyebrows. Overall, I've been quite surprised at how much detail I've been able to get into this head sculpt, to be honest. And here is the head on that neck. And as you can see, because because it's standing straight up and I haven't been able to fuss with the coat that much, the neck looks quite long. But the reason they've made the neck that long is because this jacket is very puffy. And if you didn't have that going all the way on, once you bring it up and we push it all together, it will bring down that neck length a little bit. I think this works really well. The magnet in there is quite firm sits in quite nicely and then you can have him posed around as you so wish now if you pushed him all the way back it looks a bit unnatural but you've got quite a lot of articulation there more than you normally would i think and it works very well so that's a nice design feature i think and as we move down into the jacket you can see there is some exemplary details in this coat you can see all the little zips are sculpted in there 
This is like a real, really soft pleather material. I'm not sure how well this is going to last, this pleather, over the years. It feels very thin, and it, at points when you're moving it around, slightly brittle as well. So I'm not 100% certain how well that's going to last over the years, but we'll see. You can see there's some great details, little buckles in there, the zip. It's all stitched very well. The stitching's not too big. Some zips in the coat there. We've got this ability to move the shoulders forward, and this moves out with it. My only negative about that is it does look a a little puffy it is a bit puffy in hand it's not as bad it looks far worse in the camera through the lens that I'm looking at and I don't think they could have done much to improve on that because this is a 112 scale figure you're trying to make a pleather coat it's not gonna work out very well the sculpting maybe just even a fraction off will make it look a little puffy and this one does certainly look a little puffy but overall in hand when you're looking at this guy on the shelf it's not as bad as maybe you can see right here. I'm quite impressed with what they've been able to do. If we come down to the trousers, you can see they've even managed to sculpt the zip into the side of the trousers there. It's got the seam across there that he has in the movie. You can see they've gone to great lengths to get some movie accuracy here. They haven't just gone with just a plain pair of black pleather trousers. They've even tried to put the seams in where they were in the film. We come down to the boots and this is a plus and a minus point. When you come down, you can see that this is top part is actually pleather and this is sculpted down here and they've merged them together so you get good articulation in the ankles however one of the downfalls of that is the fact that these ankles are not as strong as I would hope them to be and when you're standing there and you're doing all the poses if you pose it in the wrong way or you put the weight on this wrong it's going to buckle and this guy could fall which is why I recommend you always keep them on the stand where possible and speaking of stands see Mezco this is how you're supposed to do it 112 scale tiny stand to match rather than the big stands that you get with Mezco I'm sorry I keep going on about it like a bloody stuck record but yeah this this is a very nice stand i really like this t800 terminator 2 judgment day logo on the front not too big you could get a whole bunch of these all lined up together and then you could have fit quite a few of these on the shelves so i think great twins have uh, made a good call there because you're more likely to buy more of their figures if you can fit them all on the uh, shelf with their stands and as we can see on the stand there's that crotch grabber there just fits in and this metal arm comes along and this actually goes with another stand and this is the exclusive version. I'm not sure there was a non-exclusive version to be quite fair. I have a funny feeling that everybody got this stand. You also get this T800 sort of war-like stand and you can just pop this pole out of the back of that stand and push it into this one. And underneath you can see there's a button there for a light up feature, but I don't know if this is even gonna work. Let's try. Oh, yeah, kinda. You can kinda see it. The eyes light up on that skull, which is a really nice touch. Big and a great little touches. Here's some of the accessories he comes with. He comes with this Gatling gun. Very finely detailed for 112. However, I would have liked, if it's a niggle, it's a little tiny niggle, but I would have liked some gun metal dry brushing in there. You can see the red buttons being coloured in there. The Gatling turns, which is really cool. I like that. And then you get this uh, bullet belt, comes with it, and this fits in here here like so just there but these prongs are so tiny that i get a feeling with the with the strength of this it could easily snap those prongs off so i wouldn't re wouldn't recommend you pose it with it unless you're doing some photography you might have to you might want to do it at some point but just i'm warning you be careful because i get a funny feeling that the prongs on that will snap off if you're not careful he also comes with this little handgun again black and silver like in the movie seems to be quite accurate and the clip does come out you can see the bullet in there there is a slightly sloppy paint app just on this side here the bullets over been over painted onto the clip a little bit it's not the end all or be all but it's a nice detail and then you get the winchester shotgun i think it's a winchester i'm not 100 certain no moving parts in this i'm afraid still very nice detail for 112 no bleed off of the colors some nice silver applications in there and he also comes with gloved and ungloved hands some gripping hands some glove fists we get a gun holding hand without a glove relaxed hand or more relaxed and we get this knife hand and this was one of the exclusives that came with that stand as well but unfortunately this is for when he's supposed to be cutting off the uh the arm skin to show miles and this is where he cuts it all off and you can see the detail they've actually got the little bit of blood around the edge there and then we've got this lovely endoskeleton arm and this has got flexi fingers so it's not too bad they won't snap off i think that's a very good touch is they probably made it hard plastic and then realized these things snap off too easy so they made this uh slightly more rubbered fingers to help keep it safe and great details in there we get those fine sunglasses that I showed you before. And he also comes with the grenade belt. Lots of die cast grenades in there. Here's one. Die cast. And he comes with this 
grenade gun that he's got in his hand here. No moving parts again, nicely detailed. A little bit of dry brushing wouldn't have gone amiss. Easily rectified, comes with the Gatling gun, bullet holding bag there. And there's a little slot in the top here that the bullets go into and they feed out into the Gatling gun. And one extra feature you get with this guy is a smaller neck peg. This is the long one that was on him before. I've put a shorter neck peg on there now and that allows you to take the jacket off and put the head on and it won't look like he's got such a giraffe neck. That was a nice touch by Great Twins. I'm glad they noticed that and acknowledged it and actually did something to try and rectify it. This is him with the uh, exclusive arm on and he's also trying to cut it off. Unfortunately, this little knife here is a uh, it's not very good, it's a bit wonky. I think that needs warming up and reshaping, but it's it's quite a rubbery knife anyway. I don't know if it will be reshaped, but it should have been better than what it is, especially for the price you're paying. You're paying more for this than you would do a Mezco. I think they've done an okay job with the body. I think the joints are mildly more unsightly than you would normally expect, but that's just the way it has to be. And that T-shirt, the neck is just a little bit too wide here, so it exposes that neck joint just a little bit too much. Okay, as this is a new product from a new company, let's just have a quick look at the kind of articulation we are to expect from these guys. Obviously, this is on a magnetic ball joint there, that pop, so you get lots of articulation out of this guy. If you want to put him in a crazy pose, you can. You obviously get some ugly lumps here and there because of that roundness, but it's not too bad. I'm going to take that off for the moment so I can show you more articulation. You can get the arms up that high, comes around, bicep swivel, double jointed elbows. You get wrist pivot and turn in, although that is a very sensitive wrist peg at the moment. One of the issues I've got is the glue in here is a little bit loose. So you can see there's a gap in the bicep there, which is a shame. And the joints, I think, could be a bit cleaner and less ugly, but as it is, it's not too bad. The forearms have been sort of matte painted, so they look more like skin, although it's slightly more shiny up on the bicep. You're supposed to bring those sleeves down, but then it shows that ugly joint there. It's got some reasonable ab crunch. It's got lots of waist swivel. Legs come out to about there. Comes up there, double bend in the knees. Loads of ankle pivot, probably a bit too much, but you know, there is a butterfly joint in there yeah there is a butterfly joint in there it's not a massive one but there is one in there and he's obviously been sculpted to look more like Arnold around the chest area and the arms overall guys I really like this T800 from Great Twins 112th is a scale that I think is slowly rising up and I think we're going to start seeing more and more quality releases as the years go by and this is a great step in the right direction it's got loads of accessories it comes with two stands he comes with one two three four guns he comes with some great real pleather clothing on he also comes with enough hands that you could do many different poses with him he also comes with a grenade launch out with the grenades uh, a bag as well if this is the direction that great twins are going to go then I'm all for it. I think because of the jacket, this guy isn't as good as maybe I think they wanted him to be, but I obviously know that they, they will try better in future. They've definitely got the T1000 in production, and they've also got an endoskeleton in production, and I think we'll see a vast improvement on them than this guy simply because of all the clothing involved with this guy they weren't going to knock it straight out of the park on their first go but as first goes though this is a strong swing and i really actually think if you were on the fence about getting this in 112 scale don't be he is a good buy he's going to sit on your shelf he's going to command some presence and it's a great indication of the quality that we're going to get from great twins obviously this is an entry level figure so when they do their first figures they want to impress and they've gone all out to try and impress and they have. I wouldn't be surprised with later releases if they pull back on the accessories a little bit. That's to be expected. But I promise you, I reckon once this guy sells out, people are going to be fighting for this. So don't miss out on this. If you're a Terminator fan, then you should really have this one in your collection. You'll be very proud to have it on your shelves. Okay, guys, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. And I've got to go chase Arnold off my lawn because he's just hanging around there now for no fucking reason. Get off my lawn, you crazy Austrian. Bye-bye, guys.